So oh. y'all can say hi. Hey, everybody. Oh, no. How's it I going? can hear you, Saraya. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right. It should be set. All right. Thank you, everybody. My headset needed uh, a reminder. Actually, no, I need a reminder that I got a new headset. Mm, isn't it delightful? It's just the last one, but a newer version. <laughs> okay. um, so thank you all for coming to the Roll20 Roundtable. And by thank you all, I mean both the people in chat, uh, the people who sent us questions through the forum, and uh, the folks who are joining me today. So I am Soraya, Director of Communications at Roll20. And uh, with me is Trivia, our Director of Licensing. Eric, our business analyst, and Stephanie, our scrum master. So you've got a pretty good range of people here to answer uh, questions. And um, we can get into that in a moment. Wanted to give you all some updates about, oh, somebody waved hi to us, thank you. Um, <laughs> wanted to give you all some updates about what's been going on recently. Um, so with Advanced Fog of War, those of you who have been following the saga might know that uh, since the Get a New Look update, we've discovered that there were a number of things with Advanced Fog of War that weren't working the way people expected them to work. And uh, we have basically taken that back to the drawing board, and we are working on a very broad revision to the system that will bring it more in line with the way that dynamic lighting works. So because that takes, because it's a huge revision and we want to make sure that we get it right this time, we are going to be taking a little while on that. But we do want to keep you updated about it as it's happening. And um, I don't know, does anyone else have any comments about where, where the advanced fog of war stands right now? Just that having seen some of the cool stuff that is being worked on and is in prototype stage, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't seen the prototypes yet, but I've heard the excitement coming out of the prototypes. So I think people will be happy, but it is it is going to be uh, something that's going to be a big focus for us and it's going to take a while. Maybe also mention that we just hired another graphics programmer to help out with that effort. That's true. We did. Uh, if you, I think the blog went out too. So if you haven't gone over to the blog yet, go over to the blog and say hi to Corey, our new graphics developer, who is fantastic. Um, so we also just released a marketplace update. Uh, it went out yesterday. It's a revision to the UI of our marketplace. It adds search filters that make it easier to find the games and the art that you're looking for. Um, Trivia, do you have any thoughts about the marketplace update? Yeah, so the uh, it's been a really like intense uh, rehash of the entire marketplace um, that we've actually been uh, rolling out in steps behind the scenes for several months. So this was like the big reveal. Um, for everything that everyone's able to access. So uh, you'll find that the search is super fast now when you're looking for your favorite things on the marketplace. Um, and you can also now set up some really like detailed filters. Like if I want to find all um, map packs that are in forests that use square grids and are top down, you can add all of those filters into your search and it'll only return those for you so very cool yeah it's if you haven't if you haven't seen just how granular it gets please please go check it out um and also uh when you're when you're searching through different categories um on the left hand side of the screen uh you can actually click through filters to see kind of how we've organized things so um you know you go to games you go to adventures and you can find one shots or you can find long campaigns and that's all now really easy to find in in our menu so mm -hmm. i hope everyone really likes it um yeah it's been it's been fun and we made some changes to um the on the on the back end side not everyone here is you know a marketplace creator but we did make some changes about uh marketplace stuff mm -hmm. so do you want to tell folks what sure we've done? uh so the original way of 
uploading to the marketplace um, was really work intensive. Like we we pretty much manually updated every marketplace product that's been released. Uh, and now we have a really cool upload tool. So that makes it so marketplace creators can actually upload things themselves and iterate on them. Like they can go and change the descriptions of their items and everything. Um, they can go through and change all their tags uh, and then submit that to us for approval instead of having to submit, wait, look at it, go, oh, wait, no, hey, can you fix that? Right. So it's it's made it a much easier funnel. So um, we're really excited about having that process easier for marketplace creators as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen the first question in chat. I just want you all mm -hmm. to know we are going to answer some questions from chat, uh, as well as questions that people sent us in advance from the forum. Uh, so hang in there. We are going to get to that question, just not right now. Right now, I have a question for um, Stephanie, because within the Marketplace update, I think we have something coming still that maybe yeah. you might want to talk about. Yeah, so there was a there was a s sort of sneaky announcement in the blog post about the marketplace update, which is that um, the next thing that we're working on in the marketplace, and when I say the next thing we're working on, I mean that we are working on it actively right now. That is that is the current sprint work for that team. Uh, is the wish list feature the much wanted, much requested? Wish list feature for the marketplace. So you'll be able to uh, make a wish list, uh, save your things to it. Um, you'll be able to have more than one wish list if you want. Uh, so if you have been wanting to save that for later, uh, you know that that art pack or that map or uh, you know what, whatever it is, or you want to make a wish list of these are all the things I want when I when I finally get ready to run my my you know Pathfinder two campaign you can you can put it all together into a wish list for yourself mm -hmm. and for the tried and true of uh you know someone is running is jamming a campaign for you people always want to chip in and buy some extra resources for the gm your gm can now have a wish list for you mm -hmm. like, i really want this book or i really want this pack of art and you can go through and support your gm that way because you're not yep. buying them pizza probably <laughs> well not yet not yet we have not we have not yet integrated with uh, with a pizza delivery service to make that happen. But we did we did have a company pizza party. Uh, we did for uh, I know that Energy Scholar mentions that uh, this is their first time seeing Roll Twenty folks. So hello, welcome, Energy Hi. Scholar. Um, for those who do not know, Roll Twenty is a completely remote company. So I am in Seattle, and everyone else here is in different parts of the world. Um, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I, everyone is across, scattered across the country, different time zones, different cities. We don't have like a main office that we go to in the morning, but we wanted to kind of experiment and have a fun little company pizza party. So we all on a certain day, on a certain Friday, decided that we were going to order little personal pizzas around, um, I believe it was 11 a.m pacific time yeah i think the i think it was supposed to be like everyone the party was supposed to start around 11 a.m and like like one person on the east coast their pizza arrived at nine in the morning <laughs> and uh and like like yeah it was it, it it was it was a little bit of chaos but you know what it was super fun it was um, enjoyable chaos and i and i won the pizza lottery i got a really good little pizza wow. <laughs> I, I lost the pizza lottery, but it's okay. It's I'm all sorry, right. Trivia. It's fine. <laughs> Your pizza sounded good until you my, described the actual taste. My pizza looked amazing, and I was so glad that it was there. Uh, <laughs> I, I do low carb, so yeah. I also was on vacation at the time, so I did not get to partake. Oh no, no, no vacation pizza for Eric. Pizza for no. Eric. Sorry. We'll have to do it again. This is really what it comes down to is we need to do this again. I think so. Yeah. Let's let's submit that official request. Another pizza party just to make sure yeah. that Eric gets one. And Corey, since he's new. I think that's fair. <laughs> I'm I see no problem with this. <laughs> well, speaking of um doing things for and with Eric. Uh, I'd like to talk about the OR Group industry report. Uh, Eric, as our business analyst, is the person who puts together uh, the numbers that we use in the report. And we made some pretty significant changes to the way that we do the report this time. Eric, can you talk about it a little? 
Totally. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so previously our OR report was based entirely off of users telling us what's going on, kind of like a survey, right? And like any survey, a response rate's never going to be 100%. Uh, and typically it's less than a quarter. And this was true for, for us for the past few years. So we wanted to get a better idea and get a better picture of how everyone was using our site and what kind of games people were playing and for how long. So uh, that's this past year, I've been working on trying to build up a from the from completely new scratch uh, how how we can get that information. And um, so now we're we're tracking not just by you telling us like the original survey respond, uh, responses, but we're also tracking by character sheet usage because we know we don't want everyone to go and not everyone will uh, go and update settings or anything like that and tell us and stuff like that. Uh, so we just want to be able to observe it anyways because we can tell by the uh, the character sheet that you're playing with. Uh, we have a pretty good idea what game you're actually playing with that character sheet. So um, so now we can capture uh, not just by what you're telling us, but by what character sheet you're using. And that's boosted up from about you know a, less than a quarter to over 80, 80 85, 86 percent of all games. So uh, it's not perfect. We're still working on that last 14 percent of games and the, how to get that information. Uh, however, uh, Games without character sheets, uh, tracking my character sheets is going to be a very tricky situation. However, um, we can definitely endeavor to get custom character sheets and classifying custom character sheets uh, and tying them back into the game systems that they belong to. So that's a that's a big uh, push for us for quarter three and quarter four. And I don't want to promise any additional features or anything like that, but just so you know, uh, behind the scenes, we're looking at not just what games or people are playing, but we're also emphasizing on how people are playing them. Um, for example, we want to look at uh, you know, what sort of add-ons, modules, token sets, uh, features like dynamic lighting, music. Uh, we're trying to look at how uh, you all love our site and use the things of our site so we can get better feedback about what enhancements need to be uh, improved upon or, or additional features that people uh, request. Um, and lastly, I know a lot of people are interested in this, is uh, the chicken and egg problem between support of games and people playing and using them, right? Uh, if we make more modules support, does that mean people are going to try it out and stuff like that or vice versa? Do people not try things out because there's not enough support or do people are waiting for support and because it's not there, people aren't playing, right? That's that sort of uh, question. And so now that we can track usage by time and we can we can try, sort of follow where people are going with their gaming habits, uh, we can have a better clarity to that sort of question. So I'm, I'm super excited about coming on for the next couple quarters. Yeah, me too. I mean, even in the first version of the report, we got some uh, interesting uh, information about uh, Call of Cthulhu, right? Because that, um, I can't remember what category it was, but there was one category where it actually uh, took second place for named systems. So it was D&D &D and then yeah. Call of Cthulhu. And I know you did some looking into that and found out that the playing patterns for Call of Cthulhu games are a little different from the playing yeah. patterns that we're used to for some other games, right? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so that was the campaign total. So not necessarily the sheer number of accounts, although uh, Call of Cthulhu is still uh, the third highest for there, if you're excluding uncategorized games. But for campaign percentage, um, there's way more campaigns of Call of Cthulhu. And what we found out here is that the average time spent in Call of Cthulhu games though was also much shorter, which to me indicates that people are playing a lot of smaller games of Call of Cthulhu rather than larger games. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, D&D and your sort of very long-term campaigns, they sort of have a, a general duration of how long they would go. Um, you know, somewhere between, uh, I don't remember the number offhand, I don't want to be quoted on Twitch with the wrong number, but, uh, you know, somewhere between like 40 or so, I don't know, uh, whatever the hours were. Uh, and Call of Cthulhu was significantly less off, offhand. I think it was uh, like 12 or so, yeah, like 12 or so hours from that. Right. Um, and that, to me, is particularly interesting because it shows sort of, uh, a, a way of playing a role-playing game that's not just the standard you meet every week, you do something. This game seems to have a shorter lifespan. It, it, it burns faster. Mm -hmm. I, I speculate that is because you, you Die. lose sanity faster <laughs> yes. in Call of Cthulhu. Both in-game and out? <laughs> I'm not going to speculate. No, mostly in-game. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's a good, it's yeah. a good game. Exactly. I, I really like how it, it sort of uh, contradicts the narrative of all role-playing games have to be two-year-plus-long commitments. You know, there are paths to eternal game playing that you're going to play from 1 to 20 or whatever. Uh, Call of Cthulhu games, they seem to be short. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited that the more information we get, the more we can see uh, if people like to play Call of Cthulhu, they return to it, or if they try something else and then come back to it, like if it's sort of like an on-off pattern and that type of stuff. So uh, it's, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. 
Um, the other thing that I want to make sure everyone here gets to hear about is that we launched a new help desk a couple of months ago. If you go to roll20.net slash help, that'll take you directly to the new help desk. And I, I really like it. It's it's got all of our policies in one place. We are we have been transporting over the information about how do you use this feature and how do you use that feature. Um, we're not completely done with that yet, but it's really far along and there's a lot of useful information there. The thing that's really nice about it is it has really useful little search bar that will pull up all of the things both from you know the policy perspective or like a tool feature perspective and make it easier to find the things you need. And if you can't find the things you need or the thing you need seems to be broken, there's a link right on the site where you can send us a ticket and our customer support team will get back to you. Um, so it's roll20.net slash help. Uh, I recommend it a lot. Um, I also want to let everyone know that we have Roll20Con coming up October 5 to 6. Um, so that's, I was about to say next month, but it's technically still August. <laughs> I'm just looking ahead. Um, but yeah, Roll20Con, it, we've got a lot of cool stuff planned for it. Uh, we're going to start the roll of information in September. So if you've been waiting to hear what's going on with Roll20Con and what uh, what we're going to have, what we're going to offer, uh, stay tuned because you'll start hearing a lot more about it in September. And I'm really excited for a lot of the things that we've got coming up. Um, I'm going to, at this point, switch us over to some chat questions just because I don't want to keep you all waiting too long. And then we'll go back to some forum questions um, afterwards. But uh, let's see, what have we got for chat questions? Um, <laughs> Avos asks, can we spoil anything about more Paizo content? Well, um, I'm doing that in our forum questions. Is that, so should I, I don't want to do it early. I have a, I have a plan. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> then I ask. Yeah, so I will make some announcements later. Mm -hmm. Then I ask for your mind. patience, Avos. We will yes. spoil some stuff. <laughs> I promise. Uh, <laughs> they, it looks like they're playing a Pathfinder game right now. I'd be curious to hear if you're playing Pathfinder uh, second edition or if you're playing with classic Pathfinder. Um, I have been playing a game actually with Trivia, who is the best goblin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, they uh, Voss plays one e still, but cool. uh, I've been playing two. I with still trivia. have an announcement, so we're good. We're yes, good. <laughs> we are going to get to there. Um, and I saw a question. You know, it's funny, Trivia. I play a goblin in our in our two e game as well. I'm glad that we both play goblins. I am too. <laughs> are the best. I'm, playing... I'm a goblin bard. It's great. Yeah. I'm Path playing Pathfinder gnome. seems to really embrace the goblins pretty well. I, I like, mean, I I like the support there. <laughs> Trivia very thoroughly embraced the goblin. Um, my secret story. I'm always a goblin. That's, yeah, fair. I, I played a gnome, which I'm really happy about because I actually really like the, the thematic stuff that they do for, for gnomes in Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. Uh, second edition. I'm not terribly familiar with like first edition lore, but um, in this one, there's something about like they can they have they have to retain some enthusiasm for life, right? They're driven by it literally and physically, and if they lose that, they kind of drain out and lose their color. Uh, so I'm playing a character who is just kind of walking that border where she's uh, very flat, but she cares oh. about things still. Oh, the pathos. The pathos. <laughs> the color literally drains out of them. Yes, it literally yeah, drains out of them. And her name is Lavender. She's all about color. Now, playing this character next to Trivia's weird little gabo. <laughs> That's great. We only have one tall person in our whole group of five. <laughs> yeah, we have two gabos, uh, one gnome, one halfling, and one elf. <laughs> we treat with great suspicion. Can't trust um, people. <laughs> okay. Uh, Is there another chat question? There possibly? are. Um, I don't know if we can really answer this one, but Jenna Wynn wants to know, when will someone run uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition for them because the games in Matchmaker are so low? I know, mm. I know that's something that I definitely would love to see. That's not something we can directly do because we can't sit there and, and run all of the games ourselves. Um, but I do know that that's something that we're trying to make 
uh, playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition easier with uh, a lot of things that Trivia will talk about later. And I'm hoping that as we start getting those out, more people will come and try it out and find out that it's a really fun game. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Crow you. Uh, asks, for roll templates, are there any plans to fix the disconnect between what is rolled by 3D dice and what is displayed by the template? For instance, things like critical damage dice are conditionally displayed, but always rolled by the 3D dice. That's a complicated one that I don't know if I can answer on my feet. Also, that's Scott yeah. C. Hi, Scott. Yes. <laughs> I d Hi, Scott. Um, I was thinking that was a familiar Twitter handle. So I, I'm i not the uh, person who can definitively answer this question. I know that when it's, when it's things like Pathfinder, uh, right, uh, because of the way that their crits confirm, um, we have to roll them all at once. So all of the 3D dice come out, whether or not you got that crit. Um, Which I like. <laughs> yeah, it is fun to see them all go. But um, yeah, so that's that's something that we should continue discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. As far as what we can get the the roll template to do, yeah. so uh, I'm, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I can't really address how the roll template presents the information. But what I do know is that, and this is something that I had to learn, was that um, the presentation of the three D dice, it, it's not just a presentation. It's like like what you do affects the roll, and so um, we can't just say, oh, well, we'll just make them look like 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 this, like you can't just make it, you know, have the dice just, just land and show that what the result is. The dice landing is, is what de how, uh, partly determines that, that result. So um, it was just pretty, that, like I used to work in casino gaming and, and having presentation separate from math was, was a thing. And so it's, it's very interesting to me that they're in fact, not separate in, uh, in our dice roller, in our 3d dice. Yeah. Um, something else that I, I'd be curious about is whether or not changing how roles are queried, uh, will determine whether or not additional dice are rolled. So for example, I know in your game settings, you can turn off, like always roll at advantage and stuff like that. So if you don't want that at, advantage that you don't have showing that credit and rolling that extra dice. I wonder if that stops the 3D dice from rolling. I imagine it does. It does, because it, it only rolls yeah. one dice. Yeah, it only yeah, rolls the dice that but with, with, uh, yeah. like the Like Paizo games specifically, the way yeah. that the, the crits confirm always is like this five or six dice yeah. going at once. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, Jenna Wynn's question from chat is, can we get an addition drop down for Pathfinder so we can filter uh, first edition so, and second edition. And Jenna, I'm not sure if you've tried since Tuesday, but on Tuesday, Pathfinder second edition was added to the to the game selector. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't know if you've checked since then, um, but take a look. Yeah. Uh, it is it is written Pathfinder second is written out as a word, not two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But hopefully, if you try that, it works. And if it doesn't, please send us a bug report because that should be fixed. Yep. <laughs> Um, and then Keith had a question about advanced fog of war. We answered it in chat, but just really briefly, yeah, we talked about that a little bit at the beginning here. So, uh, there will be a VOD posted after this. And so if you missed the beginning and you want to scroll back, um, keep an eye out for that VOD. Uh, we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Um, so now let's go ahead and go back, get these forum questions rolling. First question. Well, it relates. What's up? with layer up this is a question from gargamond on the forum so let me uh <laughs> um okay so the the graphics layer where layer up and advanced fog of war live uh it's changing a lot um we're improving the the architecture underneath it we hired uh corey as we mentioned at the beginning um so uh it's too early in this process to announce a release date <clears throat> but um but but there are changes coming and and layer up is part of that layer up is part of the whole you know um, you know fixing all of the, the graphic uh, components shall we say yeah. Um, yeah so it's it it's kind of all rolled together uh, we delayed it initially for other things uh, especially the my audio stuff and when we started to actually tackle it it was like wow there's a lot here 
Uh, and it seemed like it was it was a good thing to sort of step back and say, well, should should we should we look more at the architecture itself and make sure that we make something that can be supported long term? Um, and so that's what we're doing. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm excited about that. But basically, right now, um, uh, we don't really have any updates for you now because we want to basically look at that architecture and make sure that we have good foundation to keep our building metaphors going <laughs> before we add another floor. Uh -huh. mm. Kitten would be proud of my metaphor. Um, okay, so. Anani Mouse asks, what is the legality of using marketplace content to run paid games on Roll20? I have an answer. Ah. So, <laughs> so uh, if you are a paid GM on Roll20, it works the same way as if you paid someone in real life, right? Like if I paid my friend 50 bucks to run games for me and my friends, um, for a month and we went to their house and we used their books and we used their miniatures and we used their their uh you know wet erase draw on maps that's not distribution to us they're still the gm's items and so that's how we have it on roll 20 as well um if you're in a game with a gm it doesn't count as distribution of content which is what our code of conduct is all about so yeah you're good yeah run those games they're there so you can have fun with people um, all right. From Anonymous, we got a question about the Blades in the Dark character sheet. I can't see it. Um, the Blades in the Dark character sheet is one that is maintained by the creator of that game. And mm -hmm. my understanding of this is that uh, they made an update to the sheet, I think, sometime last week. That We made... updated the game list um, because mm -hmm. we were not originally aware that it was Evil Hat Sheet uh, because the, the person that submitted it was not one of the creators right so okay. we just put it under community like any of them and then after i spoke to them at gen con actually it was like oh this is your sheet hold on we better put that in a different spot in the games list and it just means you need to add the sheet to your game again and it's in a different section now it's under the the by publisher oh, okay that's list. what happened so, mm -hmm. so they got a little they got a little extra hug Yes, yeah. <laughs> they are. The sheet is now where it belongs uh, as a publisher supported sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really, I really enjoy Blades of the Dark. So hopefully, uh, Anonymous is listening and can just go and uh, re-add that sheet to their game and keep keep murdering or thieving or whatever it is they're up to. <laughs> um, I, I had to do that for my own tests, and it did work because I'm also kind of prepping a Blades in the Dark game right now. So this is are, are you going to stream it, Eric? uh it remains to be said probably mm -hmm. okay okay um feel free to to pitch yourself here eric eric does have a twitch channel where oh. he streams a lot on roll 20. oh yeah come on all my game but don't be shy yeah, he's a fantastic it's, it's gm cool. and as a fantastic yeah. gm i really <laughs> enjoyed our mouse guard game eric it was I, great. thank you i i do i do like my games but uh I don't want to. I don't want to take too much time. That's, that's just, I, I, this is not about me. This isn't my time. This is this is customer question time. You're rather, allowed to be a human I'm, too. I know, but I want. I want. I want to answer these questions. People are very hungry for the answers to these okay, questions. Okay, fine. Well, not somebody in chat ask Eric what his Twitch channel is that so he has there to you answer go. your question. There you go. If <laughs> someone asks about it, then I will. <laughs> um, all right, trivia. Here's at least one of the long-awaited questions about Pathfinder Second Edition. Will I'm it ready. be supported with all the upcoming releases? This is from Mylorn. So we can't guarantee every release. Um, as as any fan of Paizo knows, they have an extremely regular and fast release schedule. Um, like literally every month, there's two or three or four things released from Paizo. So um, we're gonna do our best to keep up with the ones that will um, help folks the most. Like we released the core rule book and a standalone adventure first thing for Pathfinder too, because that's what you really need to start the game. So that's uh, the way that we're, we're going with that. Um, we wanna make sure that it's really well supported and we wanna make sure that uh, the, the stuff that will help the, the biggest number of people play the game is out first before looking into things that maybe are a little more niche. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have plans. Mm -hmm. um, Ominous plans. So, so probably not everything, but a lot of the really, really cool stuff that will help you with your characters and games. Awesome. 
All right, well, let's uh, pop back over to some chat questions for a moment because I've seen a couple uh, building up. Um, oh, sh I have to use my outside voice. Sometimes I get a little quiet. Feel free to yell at me, chat. Uh, well, no, don't yell at me. It's not very nice. But please feel free to let me know that I'm a little quiet. Uh, Strix Strixen has asked, I noticed that the search function in the marketplace doesn't take the names of assets into consideration. Why is that the case? You can't search for anything specific. Only results you get are one plus year old packs because they don't have a three tag limit and everything new gets filtered out. Um, Dean has... Uh, Dean is our uh, director of operations uh, and previously works in licensing with Trivia. So Dean has added some input on this, which is that it actually does take the item name and tags into consideration, but it factors the pack name and pack tags more highly. This is a new system, so we are still waiting some tweaks and watching and seeing how things plays out. Um, but definitely the per item name and tags are in the algorithm and we will keep working on it, um, you know, on the and system. And for support. individual um, like tokens in a pack, the first three tags are the only ones that are um, part of the algorithm. So if someone's named something like token, humanoid, bard, dwarf, dwarf isn't making it because it's not one of the first three. Oh. So if you are a marketplace creator concerned about this, shoot us an email or contact us on Slack, uh, on the creator Slack, and we will see what we can do to help you edit those things mm -hmm. if you need to. So, yeah. uh, Apparently, I am the Roll20 version of Siri. I just do text to voice. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, 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 go, I go on the internet and find Dean's answers to things, and I read them out loud for all to hear. That's fair. All right. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Dwayne Costa asks, are there any plans to add a user rating system in the marketplace so that verified purchasers can rate the World 20 products that they have purchased? So that's, that's something that we're still discussing internally. Um, the, our biggest concern with that is abuse of that system. You know, um, what does a verified purchaser mean? Um, is it literally everyone? Um, might that affect uh, some of our licensors? Like there, there are a lot of factors that we have to take into consideration there. So we hear pe that people would uh, like some more reviews mm -hmm. on packs and products, um, but we're, we're wanting to make sure that if we do that, that it's um, something that no one can abuse to hurt anyone you know what I mean so yeah but there are yeah, some it's, it's, in place. it's a sensitive it's a sensitive thing that we want to make sure that we do really carefully yeah so. um so yeah it's it's always there's always this balancing act um with features like that that interact like we want we want to bring people together in as many ways as we possibly can but also we want to make sure that when we're doing that we're doing that in a responsible way that looks out for the people who want to use Roll20 and have fun um and it looks like uh, Dean and Strixen are having their own <coughs> conversation in chat, and we're sorting through some search things. So hopefully, hopefully that's been helpful. Um, uh, Armandeo three wants to know if there's any PF two news about the Bestiary or Age of Ashes. I know that uh, we've we've touched on this. Hold before. on, let me see. Um, that's, I think that's also one of the that's coming forum up. questions. It's a forum yes. question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are going to get to that in uh, a little bit. Uh, I'll switch back to forum questions actually right right after this so that we can maybe have that one come up soon. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely, we've definitely got some answers for you along that front. And really happy that you're enjoying the first day support of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. It's been great to have it. All right. Now let's get back to the forums. Starfinder and Pathfinder 2nd Edition, Character Mancer, win. This is a question from Wes Numbers. All right, so Starfinder Character Mancer uh, unfortunately was delayed um, due to some uh, resource-related things. Um, one of our developers uh, didn't, uh, was in school, didn't have enough time to do both things at once, right? And uh, seeking higher education is 
wonderful goal. So uh, right now, Cassie, who's the lead of the user collaboration team, which uh, handles Character Mancer and Character Sheets, uh, where is currently doing a big hiring um, sweep. So uh, we put that on the blog as well. So if you saw that we were looking for more sheet developers, that is part of that. So uh, she's looking to expand that team to have more resources for that. So short version, short answer of Starfinder Character Mancer is there's a lot of development done, but it's not quite there yet. Um, so uh, it's, it's on the list for this year, as far as I'm aware. And Pathfinder 2 Character Mancer, I believe when we did our release, we did say that the Character Mancer for that was going to start showing up early 2020. So yeah. Character Mancers are incredibly intense and take a lot of code. So um, you'll, you'll start to see that early next year. Yeah, and a Pathfinder Character Mancer, um... It's, it's going to take a while, but we want it to, I mean, we want it to be really smooth. We want that process to be something that makes it genuinely easy for people to get into games. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of Cassie and the user collaboration team, Winged Lioness in chat, who is our community manager, Bunny, you may have seen some of their posts on the blog, um, shares some love for the user collab team. And uh, I want to just do some love sharing of my own for the Pathfinder second edition character sheet that they made, which is pretty dope, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you've, if you've seen the Pathfinder second edition sheet physically in person, um, they did a really, really good job at the user collaboration team of bringing all that information into digital and making it easy to interact with. And it looks, it looks really good. So, you know, mm -hmm. Everyone worked really hard and did a fantastic yeah. job. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a comment that the character mancer is not as critical as drag and drop. Drag and drop will be quite a bit before oh, character did, mancer. They, um, during that question was also, did somebody say bestiary? Was that that's a, a, we, that's uh, another forum question, but another yeah. Another forum question. Okay, never mind. I'm I'm coming ahead. Excuse me. Ahead. Trivia is just so excited <laughs> to answer your questions. But yes, we do agree. Uh, there was Armandeo who who mentioned that about drag and drop. We do agree that drag and drop is more important, and we are working on that first, uh, which is why that character mentor is coming out a little bit later. There's other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's see what's next on our questions. Oh dear, coming for us. Uh, Liam asks, why is development so slow, and how do you plan to keep up with competing software at this rate? So um, I, 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 I'm taking this one. Um, <clears throat> so here's the thing. Well, we, we update at least once a week uh, with code, character sheets, and APIs. Uh, new product releases come out very regularly. Uh, and um, so it's been eight months since 2019 started. And in that time, we have released animations, better performance on Advanced Fog of War, the jukebox, the marketplace update that just went out, uh, as well as major infrastructure changes to support it. Uh, we put up token bars, we did player avatars, we uh, redid, redid the chat archive just this week. Uh, the send ping API update uh, got fixed. Uh, the Paizo account sync. Um, and then there are things that are not visible. Uh, we're doing payment system updates right now. The marketplace creator submission process, the marketplace search uh, backend that I mentioned. Um, we implemented redemption codes, so now you can, uh, you know, get a code that, for example, we gave out a code um, at Gen Con on a poster for Pathfinder too, uh, to get a, a map pack. Um, just a tremendous amount of stuff that is coming out. Uh, the way we stay competitive is we listen to our users. Uh, we, we, you know, we are a, I, I, I hate to say the words, we are an agile company because agile is a process of becoming agile and we are always in the process of becoming more agile and responding quickly to our user needs and concerns. Uh, we've had a number of the things that I mentioned here started out as just a small bug fix and then uh, in response to user concerns, as you know, we had to pivot and say, "Oh, users were using it this way. We got to, we got to, you know, change how how it works so that they can still use it that way." Um, so we're we're constantly developing to respond to those needs and also to our market needs. Um, 
everything now gets QA tested before going live. I, I will say that that was not always the case at Roll20, uh, but we now have a full-time QA engineer. We're hiring a second QA engineer. Uh, we are improving our focus on quality overall. Um, and uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you can you can you know kind of tweak and fix and and adjust using API scripts, uh, character sheets. Like, there's no way we can keep up with the needs of character sheets. So we are a platform. That's why we have you know community created character sheets and community created APIs, or API scripts. Um, so that's that's sort of a a, a general like. You know, I I I want to be very clear that we are doing a lot, and uh, you know, there there will be times where uh, it may take us longer to 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 come up with a feature or implement a feature. It's almost never because we're unaware or not working on it. It's almost always because the technical challenge of doing that on our platform is is larger than it might seem on the outside but our our code base is complex uh you know everything is is uh is is very you know it's this is a this is a very com complicated mature piece of software mm -hmm. um so uh and there was a there was a question in there in that initial question which was why are you you know why do we get release notes that say you fixed a typo and the 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 answer to that is very silly, which is that uh, I write the release notes and I am also the one who fixes the typos and dang it, I want my credit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, that's just, just kind of a, a little thing until we get a full-time tech writer. I'm the one who goes in and does typo fixes. Um, Stephanie is gift to herself. It's something, yeah, it's something I do because I care about them. So yeah. So, yeah. with, so with all that going on, I think the real question is, how does any competing software plan to keep up with us at this rate? <laughs> um, <laughs> we got some nice love from chat, uh, a couple of people saying um, that they haven't seen, it, uh, like Avos and Energy Scholar uh, don't think that there's anything viable and competitive in the marketplace. So we hope to keep, you know, working really hard to answer the needs that you all have. Like Stephanie said, we're very aware that listening to our users and trying to implement the things that will help you play your games is and always has been key to Roll 20s success. So that's something that we're always focused on and we're always focused on trying to do it right. So sometimes it takes a while. Can I can I answer a, a, a side question here? Because Avas has asked us twice, how many employees do we have? Sure. Um, I think we're now up to close to or over 30. Mm -hmm. I think we just hit either 30 or 31. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it, you know, and we are growing. We are actively hiring and recruiting right now for several positions. Um, so, you know, like we, we will keep growing into the future. Uh, and it's, it's a very exciting time to be in this company. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, it, I hope it's also, can I add one more thing about the development stuff that's going on right now is a lot of what's behind the scenes is rehashing complete systems of mm -hmm. the software like earlier this year when there was the big ruby update like it doesn't seem like a big update to anyone on the front end but behind the scenes it changed like everything, everything. for yeah. us so um it, i know that i know that it can like without a ui update at the same time it could be like same site but um right. I, I was on Slack during all those updates. I saw yeah. how much people were working. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we hired we hired a mobile app developer uh, earlier this year, and uh, and he's great, and he is working on essentially a rewrite of the mobile app. Uh, it's very exciting um, because it, because our app has needed a rewrite. Uh, it really has. It's a you know it's 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 a good tool for what it does, but we want it to do more, and we want it to be able to do more. Um, so, you know, one of the one of the questions before we came into the roundtable was, well, is there any way we can show like screenshots of what he's got? I'm like, no, because what he's got right now is all the underpinnings and and you know the the layer underneath for for this rewrite. So, what he can show, I mean, he can you know like okay, it rolls dice. I mean, that like it's what you expect it to do, right? Mm -hmm. There's the the new stuff isn't there yet, but it's coming and it's so exciting. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. if, if I may, if I may real quick, uh, sure. yeah. that, that resonates a lot with like what I do too, as well is it's, it's sort of rebuilding a stronger foundation from which everything else gets built. So, uh, a lot of that has been uh, all this behind the scenes, very strong structural infrastructural changes, uh, that may or not be as visible, but allow us to build even higher and stronger and faster, better, et cetera, <laughs> Daft Punk lyrics. <laughs> got to sing it. Um, all right. I'm going to move us to the questions. I actually just glanced at the time and we have so much fun talking to each other that it's uh, 1246 already. And this is an hour long community round table. So I'm going to move oh, things let's, along. Let's lightning round. Let's lightning round. <laughs> is there a timeline or ETA that fixes the bug that causes animated tokens to freeze when their image source has been set by the API? Stephanie, that is complicated. Do you know the answer? Lightning round. Uh, so the answer to that question is we have it in the backlog to be addressed. Uh, we're looking at ways in general to better support API users uh, as a general rule uh, and get a more streamlined path for these kinds of bug reports because uh, honestly, that one um, did not get the attention it should have. So uh, we want to make that a little bit uh a little bit easier to, and so we're looking, like you know, we'll we'll look at that bug, but more importantly, we'll, we're starting to look at like, is there is there a better way for somebody to have reported that bug for us? Yeah, for sure. And along those lines, I'm breaking my own lightning round. Um, but along those lines, I know that recently on the forums, um, I think last month, there was a discussion about uh, character sheet creators and people who work with the API being frustrated that if they post something on the suggestions forum, that's such a niche interest that it's never going to get the 200 votes required to get a dev response from it. So we actually created a new threshold for API and character sheet posts. I can't remember off the top of my head if it's 10 or 20 votes, but it's a lower threshold because we know that that's um, a smaller community, but a really dedicated community that makes a lot of people's experience of Roll20 better. So yeah, yeah we're, we're really, we're serious about it when we say that we're committed to making API better. It, yeah, and, and there's a special tag for those that um, when, it, when a post is tagged in, in the, the suggestions forum, it does not get closed. So there are now special tags for the character sheet and API suggestions, so that they they won't automatically close. Um, you know, I mean, they can be closed, but they can, they can only be closed manually. So, um, so that API requests and and character sheets, again, so we can better support those those users. Um. Okay. And uh, all right, here we go, trivia. All Mr. Right. Zenark, Spartan 75, Lindsay, Tweet, and potentially Hi, My Name Is are all wondering about the second part of the return of the Rune Lords Adventure Path, which is Pathfinder Classic, right? Yes, so that's Pathfinder First Edition. I'm not sure if they want to say Pathfinder First Edition or Pathfinder Classic. I like Classic. Q I like Q-U-E, but Classic. Cl <laughs> um, but so Vintage. Return of the Rune Lords uh, uh, ended up getting... Um, put put back on the shelf for a little bit while we worked on Pathfinder 2. So we're still working on Pathfinder 2. And if if you watch our blog, you'll notice that I did a call for more um, people to come work on the production team. So we actually doubled the size of the production team, which is the first time we've done so since I started working at Roll20 two and a half years ago. Uh, and despite everything that we've been coming out with, the team has almost remain the same size. Um, so we've got four new people working now, and that means that our resources are much bigger than they were. So uh, return two and three will be out this year, and four through six will be out in 2020. Mm -hmm. So we're here, we're gonna work on it. It's gonna be great. You're gonna be able to finish up that um, second to last arc before the Pathfinder 2 super arc. It's, it's good, Yeah. so. There we All go. All right. There we go. Um, are there any plans to bring one grung above or the turtle package uh, to Roll20? This is a question from Lauren, the GM. So those are both DMs Guild uh, supplements, and we currently do not have a relationship with DMs Guild. Uh, so we are unable to bring those to the marketplace unless we figure that out. And it gets a little wiggly because that's between... DM skill, drive through RPG, Wizards of the Coast, and then us. So, you just and the creator, and the creator, yes. And yeah. so, just to give you a little more context of why that is not necessarily an easy answer. Yeah, so. and if I'm not mistaken, Lauren, the GM, also asked in chat, Eric, what's your Twitch channel? 
twitch.tv slash Eric Volgaris. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, is there an ETA on, on the Skag book implementation? Is it Skag or should I be saying SCAG? Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Oh, you know? okay. <laughs> on the Sword Coast book implementation that Eberron comes, and Eberron that comes out in November. So um, Eberron will be out day one, same mm -hmm. as all of the the Dungeons and Dragons content. Yeah. Um, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and I'll also say Dungeon Master's Guide, um, are on my list of when can we do this, please? Oh, and Out of the Abyss. I'm going to just, we, we have a question about Out of the Abyss later. I'm just going to say it so we can skip it. Lightning round. Uh, out of the Abyss is also on that list for me. Um, so we also want all of those things out. Um, we initially had, uh, we're looking for ways to develop um, more integration for the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, I still very much want to do that, but I also want to get it out for people to be able to at least use the items in. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm figuring out resources wise uh, what's possible there. So they're still on my list. No one, we have not abandoned Sword Coast Adventures Guide out of the Abyss and Dungeon Master's Guide. They are just still waiting for the perfect time. Mm -hmm. and, and chat for the record votes 100% Skag. It's skag. Oh, really? Oh, skag. All right. Skag it I'll is. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Release date for Rage of Demons and the Lair update. Timetable for Out of the Abyss and more about Out of the Abyss. Yes, we covered that. It's yeah, we covered that. On the list. It's on it, the list. It had to it had to move around, but it's Thanks, still there. Billy Phoenix, yes. Felix, and Anion D. Uh, Combo Dude asks: Are there any plans to have a built-in area of effect measurement for spells? So um, there are API scripts that handle that, and there's a number of marketplace creators who offer templates. Uh, so there, that's not on our development roadmap at this time. Uh, what is on the development roadmap is uh, improvements to the drawing tools, um, but that's kind of down the road. So uh, as as it uh, inter, you know relates to the graphic stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's a. Uh, that's the kind of thing where where we're really happy that that marketplace creators have filled that niche for us. Mm -hmm. And they do some really cool things. I definitely, I mean, use that new marketplace search and look for like spell effects and spell templates on the marketplace. You'll find some really good stuff. Yep. Um, are there any new RPG compendiums coming to Roll20? That's from E&E. &E. Um, I don't believe I am allowed to say anything ever about what's coming up uh, without a release date. However, we do have some some cool stuff coming out that will be announced before the end of the year. So, so get excited. Stay tuned. All right, lightning round. We've got uh, three more questions from forums, and then we'll go back uh, to all the chat ones. If we go a little bit over time, that's okay, but we'll try to get as many questions as we can. Um, the music situation. Will there be anything on the horizon for something similar to the old jukebox? That is a question from Scant. So um, I wasn't entirely sure what specifically, what features specifically you're looking for in the old jukebox. Um, so I, I really invite you to post to the suggestion forum with whatever the improvement is that you're looking for. Um, I, I will say that uh, fan burst is gone. I'm, you know, we couldn't, there, there's, we can't do anything about that. It's it's no longer a source of audio. Uh, we did provide or put in search filters for the other audio providers um, a couple months ago to help you find audio um, for your games. You also can upload your own music uh, or audio files, and um, you know we we've we've done what we can uh, at this point uh, for for helping people find audio, uh, and we're always looking you know, at, at different audio sources and seeing if it's something that we can integrate uh, into our into our platform. Um, there was a comment on that same question about the LFG search. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to say that there are improvements to the LFG tool on the roadmap down the road, uh, not slated for an update in the next quarter, but it's, you know, it's certainly something we have our eyes on. Mm -hmm. And chat is pressing F for fan burst. <laughs> Let us all pay our respects. Uh, will you be releasing or supporting the Age of Adventures Adventure Path from Paizo for Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Trivia, this is the one you've been waiting for. Yes, Age of Ashes. Uh, Age of Ashes, I believe the first part will be out before the end of the year. Um, we are, and 
so currently our development is on some Wizards of the Coast stuff, some Paizo stuff, some secret stuff. Uh, but yes, Age of Ashes will be on Roll20. Awesome. Uh, and the last uh, forum question that we have is from Milan. What's the toughest aspect about maintaining the site and why? I know, Stephanie, you had some perspectives coming from our DevOps. Oh. I did. I, so I took this to the developers and I asked. Um, so here, here were the answers. Uh, keeping up with the changing demands of users, uh, because we people, people change how they play games. Uh, the sheer amount of users compared to the sheer number of employees is very high. So uh, there, we wish there were more of us to help you. Um, there's, you know, like 4 million users and, you know, not, not nearly that many devs. Um, uh, and in the same vein, scaling is, is a constant challenge. It's easy to develop something for yourself and your friends, but when you have to please, you know, 4 million people, it's much harder. Um, we have a lot of, as a result, we have a lot of legacy systems and that includes the code, but it's also the infrastructure and even our processes uh, are changing because they, you know, they're old processes. They don't necessarily support uh, a larger team. Um, so those have to be updated and they're being updated all the time. Uh, and then my, my favorite comment out of, out of that question uh, was, that we don't have enough time to play games with our awesome coworkers. Uh, we we like playing games here, and we we do play quite a bit. Um, so one of the things that that is tough is that uh, we don't get as much game time with each other as we wish. Yeah, from uh, the communications and uh, side of things, it's it's always interesting because. Um, <clears throat> the dev team is, we kind of addressed this in the earlier question where Stephanie listed like the things that we've done in the last eight months, but like the dev team is doing a lot of things. The uh, licensing team is and production is doing a lot of things um, from the communication side. We are doing our best to communicate and tell you all about all these cool things <laughs> that are going on, <laughs> but keep running into things where, you know, like we still get those questions and we're always like, oh, what can we do to tell you more about what's going on at Roll20? So keeping up with the stuff that our teams are doing and trying to keep our community up to date about the things that our teams are doing is something that's been um, a challenge, but one we're hopefully getting better at. Eric or Trivia, do you have any uh, weigh-ins on this one? You first. No, please. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I want to hear what you have to say first, Trivia. Uh, the, probably the hardest side from licensing or, you know, production, et cetera, is that there are so many people that we want to work with and are so many publishers and people um, and just not having uh, the resources in order to do so. I would like 500 compendiums to be on Roll20 and rules references for everybody, but the actual work of putting those on the site is hundreds of hours. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's probably... I would consider the hardest. Yeah, uh, similar to me, it's the prioritization of everything because uh, there's so many cool avenues and things of work that I could look into and, and help. Um, even even if I just said, you know, for the next year, I would only focus on the core things of Roll Twenty, how how people use our site. You know, I, there's still too much work from that part, right? So I have I just have a, a plethora of things that I could I could look at. Plethora, um, you say? Yes, a cornucopia. <laughs> All right, and uh, you know, so that's so the hardest part there is always like making sure that um, in any any given time, I, I'm doing the best I can in in like what in, in the in the area that that should be my focus, right? Because um, you know, I have to I have to keep jumping around different times and all that kind of stuff, and it's it just it's been really amazing. Yeah, it just I've been on our site for years now, like three years or so, and now being here employed behind the scenes for for a year and just being able to build up everything. Like, the, like I always look forward to the or report now that I have the ownership of that and, and, and just building that out for the next year mm -hmm. and all the stuff we can take away from that uh, is going to be amazing because uh, there's, yeah, there's just so much to do. Yeah. I love it. All right. So thank you, Milan, for an excellent yeah. question that wraps up our forum question set, but chat has been waiting patiently. Uh, I yeah. saw a bunch of questions scroll by in chat and a lot of them got answered by chat before they got to me. So uh, hopefully uh, everyone who has been 
ev hopefully everyone got an answer to their questions. I do have a couple that I want to make sure that we do get directly onto. So J. Bo Grand asks, will Compendium open be opened up for us to add our own content to our games? And Armandeo3 was also curious about this one. So this is, we, we call this custom compendiums. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about custom compendiums. Uh, we are still discussing custom compendiums and the, the block there is um, uh, copyright and content. Sorry, I was trying to find that word. Um, you know, what if you take the entire rule book that you have not purchased on Roll20 and put it on your custom compendium and then share it with 50 friends, right? So we, we're figuring out what that looks like and what that means. So yes, we would love to have everybody be able to have um, home homebrew rules references. Um, we're figuring out how to uh, have that be possible without it being abused. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. Lightning round. Lightning round. Be quick. <laughs> uh, V2 Blast asked, words, V2 Blast asks, uh, will Dragon of Icefire Peak, the D&D Essentials Kit, um, be sold on Roll20 once the target exclusivity ends on September 3rd? So we did not do an announcement or pre-orders for this product, but um, I definitely sent an email related to this product today. So I would keep an eye out on September 3rd. <laughs> Just you know, you know, maybe be uh, yeah. be uh, looking at that yeah. looking at that site. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Avos also asks: With the jukebox, have any issues been raised by music companies and such about j copyright or nothing? So far, we haven't. Um, before we introduced the jukebox in the format that it is, we spoke to our legal representation and worked out like what our policies needed to be and how to do that in. Um, uh, in in conjunction with DMCA laws and such, right? Like we want to be fair to everyone, users and companies that whose content is being used. But no, um, we haven't had any complaints so far. Um, and if there are, we'll certainly address those as those come up. But uh, we feel pretty confident that the way that we have chosen to handle it is uh, secure. So enjoy your games, everybody. That is the last question that I'm seeing that's not a repeat. Kitsune asks, when will Return of Rune Rods Module 2 come out? And Trivia addressed that earlier. So that's a good point, a good, as good a point as any for me to say that there will be a VOD of this. Um, there will obviously be the VOD directly available on our Twitch channel. And we'll also post uh, to the YouTube later. So if you joined us late or you missed something because you got distracted when to grab a cup of tea, whatever. Um, watch that bot. There's a lot of uh, questions that got asked there that hopefully we can answer for you. And um, I guess that's that's our round table. <laughs> I, I, see, I see you all throwing questions at me. Okay, all right, all right. Um, Constantine wants to know, uh, why are prices of official wizard books different on Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds? Um, uh, each platform gets to set their own prices yep. uh, and uh, we believe that the level of integration that we brought to the products is worth msrp mm -hmm. if it saves you three to four hundred hours because that's how long it took us to make it <laughs> of preparation time i think it's worth 30 to 40 bucks per yeah week, i'd so. love to show people behind the scenes one day of the oh my gosh it is, right it is intense it's intense <laughs> yeah the, the amount we've, of effort that goes into these we've we've talked about that as a video series yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that would be really cool. Um, um, there and... was a there was a question about uh, from Armandeo about general and game specific forums. Um, I so right now um, our forums are kind of uh, obviously we want that place for people to be able to speak to each other, but I'm a little bit leery of adding more uh, stuff to it. Uh, we kind of try to keep it in the mindset of Roll20 is the place that you go to organize your Roll20 game. And if you want to talk about like specific rules and stuff like that, there are lots of places, whether it's, you know, the publisher's own forums or, you know, a Reddit or, uh, you know, a tabletop community group that you're a part of. There are places for that that are more focused on it and would probably be better suited. So it's not something we're looking at doing right now, but uh, appreciate the ask. All right. Um, this time, 
the only last question we have is about floofers from our very own dress bar. And I said before we went on this call that I'm not showing my floofers, but Eric, do you have any dogs for us? I do have some floofers, but I have to go run and grab them because they're asleep on a couch. Is it okay if I get up and grab them? I yeah, think okay, I, I think so. Late so permit me? Time. All right, one second. I think while you do that, uh, another question we, we, we got was, do we have any questions for us, uh, for, the, for the users? And my, oh. my question is always, uh, what do you want? And could you please put it in the suggestions forum? Uh, because that is where, or vote on suggestions in the suggestion forum, because that is definitely uh, one of the one of the ways that I get to know, like what people are looking for, for sure. Dog. The, and is here's this the, the baby. Pupper. No, this is the older dog, right? Or is no, this the baby? This is the younger one. Oh this my gosh, grown up so much. You know, she's such a big girl. Is she oh. still bully? bullying her brother all the time okay <laughs> um that's that's the same dynamic my dogs have the girl bullies the boy but the ages are reversed <laughs> all it's right quite a sweetheart it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a roll 20 round table without at least somebody's pet so we hope you are uh satisfied with the answers to your questions we will continue to have more of these we're trying to do them every other month or so um, and we might try mixing some, some things up with the format in future ones that we get a chance to go more in depth about things that you might be interested in. Um, but we'll give you more updates about that as that comes to closer to being, uh, to being real, right? To being something that happens. Um, and, um, for now, again, check out the VOD afterwards. Thank you all for coming and thank you everyone from Roll20 for joining me on this stream today. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.